Now, the Nigerian presidential election is still some six months away, but it is dominating the headlines with plenty to talk about. That includes why, 23 years after Nigeria returned to democracy in 1999, the country's constitution still does not give citizens living overseas the right to vote in elections. After massive amounts of lobbying, there'd been hope that diaspora Nigerians would be able to vote in 2023. But alas, the National Assembly failed to amend the law, arguing that Nigeria is yet to perfect its voting system and as such is not ready for overseas voting. But lobby groups led by the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission and the Nigeria Diaspora Voting Council have urged supporters to strengthen the campaign to fight on and to lend their voices as loudly as possible to the advocacy, insisting that INEC is ready for the task, with INEC itself agreeing with them. There are over 17 million Nigerians currently living in the diaspora. Imagine what voting clout they could have. Well, from all this, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined now by the chairperson and CEO of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, or NIDCOM, Abike Dabiri Erewa. Great to see you, uh, Abike. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, what's the story on diaspora voting? I mean, clearly they're not going to have a chance to participate in the vote in 2023. Well, good evening, Charles, and good, good evening to all the viewers all over the world. Well, sadly, definitely it can't happen in 2023. But what we're saying is that the National Assembly can amend the laws to make it possible from the next set of elections. So we're not going to give up. We keep lobbying. As you mentioned there, we have the Nigeria Diaspora Voting Council led by Mr. Ade Omole, who is based in the UK, who has actually been pushing for this, and a lot of diasporans across the world who want to vote. Well, it's not a ma question of um, if it's going to happen. It's a question of when it's going to happen. And our plea to the National Assembly is it has to happen sometime. And it cannot happen without amending the laws. Now, we understand some of the fears. Oh, we haven't gotten it right here. Are we sure we're ready for that? Are we sure it won't mess things up? And really, it's not as complicated as that. And um, INEC, we've started with INEC a whole lot of times. INEC says, look, if the laws are amended, we are ready. And I appeal to National Assembly, and we hope to appeal to them to reconsider. It's, it's not going to start in 2023, but if you amend the Constitution, that is going to take effect for the next set of elections, so there'll be enough time to see how a diaspora can vote. And I think that there are a whole lot of benefits to diaspora being able to vote than uh, disadvantages. Well, I expect a lot of people would agree with you, uh, but, but just for the benefit of, of our viewers who might not know, I mean, why did the National Assembly strike down the bill? What reasons did they give for voting against it? Well, one of the reasons was the Constitution. When our law says, for instance, the president will be elected from, the winner will be elected from 12 to thirds of country of states in Nigeria. And then I said, so where do you put the diaspora? And the answer is very simple. Every person abroad comes from a state. So if, for instance, you present your documents in maybe the Nigerian embassy in UK, for instance, you are from Lagos State. So that vote will be counted as the votes of Lagos. And I thought the answer was very simple. Now, how do you identify? Now, the diaspora, as we define it is somebody who is legally resident in another country has an address pays tax and is um, a known resident legal resident so it's actually not somebody running away or is living illegally or is an irregular migrant here and there and that even helps us to uh, get an accurate data of the real the, the Nigerians that are legally resident in another country and that is again would be a major advantage and again um, if you have, okay, how do you do it? Now we're doing e-voting, there's electronic voting, so you can have the missions, the embassies, being your base for the voting. And we've said you can start, it doesn't have to be, oh, at the same time, everybody. You can start in maybe with some category of people. For instance, we have people working abroad, military men, civil servants, you know, that are working abroad, and the only reason they can't vote is because they are there. So you can start with a class of people. You're not going to start like, say, oh, everybody come together at a the table. Then another fair is this. 
maybe what is the demography? Do we have more of a particular place or a particular region abroad? And the answer is really no. With what we're doing with the Nigeria Diaspora Commission, I tell you, you'll be surprised at the demography. In Sudan alone, we're talking about 5 million Nigerians, which cancels a whole number in even the whole of Europe. So in, um, there are several places. In Vietnam, you'll be surprised we have a mixture of Nigerians. In Australia, again, the same thing. So you can't really say, oh, maybe it's leaning towards you know, this group or the other. But what I, whether, whatever it is, there are Nigerians and they deserve to vote. But the key thing is we're talking of legal Nigerians that are legally resident. So if you're hiding somewhere and you think I run there and vote, no, you can't. No, you definitely can't. So we are trying to allay the affairs that, you know, these are some of the things that you need to look at. And I think those are the basic things. And the fact that, are we ready? Are we getting it right in Nigeria? And I believe one of the biggest things President Buhari has done, one of the greatest legacies that he's ensured that we have free and fair elections. Now with a system of voting put in place by INEC and non-interference by Mr. President or the executive arm of government, listen, your votes will count. So for the diaspora to vote is about, you know, transmitting your results. And as we are seeing, it's getting better. You know, it's getting freer and fairer. And votes are beginning to count. Sincerely, not want somebody sitting in a room and write results. And that is, like I said, the biggest, one of the biggest legacies of Mr. President. So those, those were the main fears. And I think those fears really can be allayed and can be addressed. How do you vote? Well, you have your passport, you have no name, but like I said, you need to be a legal resident of that country. Yes, well, well absolutely. That makes um, logical sense. But uh, assuming the bill had passed, I mean, how would the process of overseas voting have worked because I mean as you mentioned I mean there are lots of Nigerians across various countries you would have had to have lots of registration centers for example voting centers um, I understand the estimate is 17 million Nigerians living abroad I mean that would have been an enormous task for INEC wouldn't it and clearly the National Assembly didn't think the Electoral Commission could cope yeah, but you don't have to start with everybody. You can start, and that's what we said, even in amending the law, those are things you can look at. You can say, okay, let's start with maybe one per continent. It could be maybe three. Then you could start with, like I said, maybe those Nigerians that are working abroad. You have the military, you have civil servants, you have people in embassies, you have staff. So you're not going to start with, oh, just like that, everybody, that will be confusing. So it's going to be a gradual thing before we get to being able to, you know, do the whole thing. I even asked Aina, can we do a test of this thing? But they can't if you don't amend the law. So well, you don't have to come, oh, everybody, we don't even have the data of all 17. And I tell you, maybe there are even more than that. Because as you know, more Nigerians are leaving the country. You know, we've had a lot of our professionals, doctors, getting jobs in other places. So we are what, still you know, getting accurate data and all that. So really, INEC is not going to say that it will be the responsibility of INEC. If INEC says, okay, I want to start in Spain, then that is it. I want to start in one state in America. That is it. Where do you have, where do you think that demography should lead us to? So INEC will have the power to take that decision. And then it's not anybody's business but INEC. The only thing National Assembly to do is empower INEC and put those clauses there. And we have said INEC should be able to do it when they feel the infrastructure is ready. So INEC will decide that, okay, we have the infrastructure to do maybe Nigerians in a neighboring country. You could say maybe those around us or a category of Nigerians. And then we take it from there. And one thing is for certain, if it's done properly and with the kind of voting we have, with the embassies, your embassies, your location, and all that, I think it will work. But the fears, okay, some said to us, okay, you ask the husbands to vote. What if they don't know the candidates? That's a strong point. What if you have somebody who is legally resident, hasn't even been to Nigeria, does not even know who the candidates are, you just say vote. Good, good answer. We've done a lot of case studies. In a country, I think Brazil, sorry, I can't quite remember, you cannot even vote if you haven't been to your country a certain number of times within that time frame. So that can be part of the clauses that ADEC will put. You cannot be away for 30 years and just come and vote. Have you been in your country for a number of times? Do you understand the process? What have you done? Things like that can come in. So, but if we don't amend the law and make it possible for INEC to now take the power and determine, then we can't know. 
So I think all those fears can be allayed, but it's going to take a while. It's a new process. It took almost over 10 years to pass the Freedom of Information Bill. So we don't we agree that it's not going to be an easy process, but we'll keep trying. We won't give up. It's about convincing parli our parliamentarians, and it's a legacy that I believe uh, the Assembly will leave behind. Well, actually, it, it sounds very interesting the way that you put it. I mean, it, it's clear that you've given a lot of thought and, and done a lot of work uh, on this. Um, but the, the, the problem, of course, um, was that if you look, for example, the Kenyans have been voting. Kenyans allow overseas uh, voting. It's a constitutional right. And therefore, that, that, is, that, that happens. But the problem with the Kenyans in diaspora voting system was that you had only one center, for example, at the Kenyan embassy in London. Um, so Kenyans living in the north of England, in Scotland, Ireland, etc., had to bear the expense of traveling to London to register and to vote. And you were talking about the, the Nigeria, INEC making a decision as to whether you, they were going to limit the number of places as a start. I mean, that probably would have been controversial, wouldn't it? Because a lot of people would say, well, we want to vote. I mean, we're living in the US or we're living in the UK. Why is it only London that can vote or, or some other place? I mean, what, what sort of thoughts have you got in that direction? Number one, Kenya. The whole of, I was looking at the whole of votes from Kenya. I don't think we've had even 5 million for the whole of the country. So they have a small diaspora population. I mean, Lagos alone, we have much more voters than the whole of Kenya. So some will even argue that, oh, that's a small country. But that's why I say that you have to look at your own circumstances. Don't compare, don't, don't uh, copy. We have our own peculiarities, we have our situation, and we deal with it and bring in our own Nigerianness when we take a decision to do that. And like I said, ANEC will decide, okay, we are, I mean, it's a law and that says, okay, we're starting in these areas. You can't fight over that. You can't fight over that. And then even the most important thing is for you to be able to vote. Are you A, B, C, D? Fine. And then let's, let's, let's agree, it's not going to be uh, it's going to be a bit chaotic if you say, oh, all, all at the same time. So again, that is our next decision to take and to start, okay, let's start here or there. And like I said, you could say, oh, maybe in neighboring countries. Allah, there could even be a clause. How conversant are you with home? Like they do in some other countries. Have you been home in the last five years? What have you done? And all that. So again, we have to be creative about it. So we won't copy Kenya because we are not Kenya. Take India, for instance, that has a huge diaspora. They don't have diaspora voting, but the Indians go home during elections to vote, and they give them like 25-year uh, visa. But don't forget that we have dual citizenship. They don't. You're either Indian or not, so you can't be both. So each country varies, and you just have to be Nigerian and be creative about yours. And while we've done a lot of case studies, and I have to thank the Nigeria Diaspora Voting Council, I mentioned them earlier, they also spend their money. They used their resources to lobby, to go around. They were in every state of the public hearing. Nobody paid them anything. So if they say you should go and vote in the High Commission in the UK, or you're in Birmingham or Manchester, or even in another a very far place in North London, anywhere you are, I'm sure the idea that you are going to uh, co uh, perform your civic responsibility should be exciting enough for you to say, I want to do it. So we'll take one step at a time, be creative about it, and ensure that it's, it's, it adds value to our Nigerianness, than rather copy any other country one way or the other. And we are ready with all the questions and the answers and how it can be done. Like I said, we've done all case studies and we've come up with what we think can really work for our country, Nigeria. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. And, and I'm just listening to you there, the big takeaway that from this is that even though it is an expensive affair, and I guess that could possibly have made the turnout low if the voting was taking place in, in sort of abroad, the, the argument, the central argument, is that it is about the right to vote, and that is a right that should not be in dispute. Absolutely. And if we're talking, of, we, keep, we keep saying, no, oh, 20, this year we're talking about $22 billion. And this year alone, we've had Nigerians coming home to invest in the country. Look, our doctors have been amazing. They've been coming home to set up hospitals. I can count about seven 
that have come home to say, we are doctors abroad, let's build hospitals here. And you know what they do? They also get, they are employing people, they have, they do their shifts, they come home, spend some months, see their patients and go back. And it's amazing. Now, thanks to our diaspora doctors, you can do things like open heart surgeries, you can treat stroke. We have one of the best cancer centers in Nigeria. People are coming from abroad to to these hospitals in Nigeria. You know, we are not, people are not talking about it because it's good news. If it's bad news, it's going to go viral. But it's happening. And even one of the doctors was telling me that, you know, we're ready to take all these people rather than go, but let them go. And then what we talk about now is brain circulation. We've been talking about brain drain, brain gain, brain circulation. No matter where you go, like these doctors coming back are bringing their knowledge, they're bringing their, and you know what, they're even training. There's a doctor who used to come all the time and, and spends a lot of money. He um, t treats children. They do surgery for children, heart surgery at various hospitals here. Now he doesn't come with nurses anymore. They've trained so many nurses, so it has reduced his cost. So they are building capacity. The Minister of Health was on a program last time that they trained 79 in the health center here, in and that's at one a session. So a lot is happening with the diaspora and they're investing in the country. Agriculture, ICT, um, food business, education, they have the right to vote and it's our responsibility to make it happen. So we appeal to parliament. There's nothing to be afraid about. It can only add value to the process and I think and I hope and I pray that the parliament will make it happen. So basically, what's the next plan of action? I mean, do, do you think that overseas Nigerians might be able to vote in 2027? I wish I had a crystal ball <laughs> that I can, can look into. Well, I thought what you did, actually. It? First thing is, uh, pardon? I thought you did have a crystal ball. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> So, but um, like I said, uh, we will keep at it. We will um, now. I'm telling you that Nigerians abroad own this battle. It's not about NITCOM. It's not about government. It's not about INEC. It's about all of you. Let's work together. Mount pressure groups. NDVC came up as a pressure group, and they were very impactful. Have more pressure groups. Talk to your parliamentarian. Who knows? Maybe we can convince them to reintroduce it before the te their tenure. Uh, in, in, in May, who knows, that may be possible. That is, a, that is, we're working on that. We're also having a lot of diasporans when they come home, visit your parliamentarian, make it a topic, set an agenda, let them know, allay the fears and say it's not about anybody. It's not even about the parliament. They are not the ones that will conduct, conduct the elections. It's INEC. And, I can, and we were saying let INEC decide when they can start when the infrastructure is there. That is the clause that can be in the bill. So we keep raising the awareness, we keep lobbying, we keep begging, we keep pleading and hope that for the sake of Nigeria and Nigerians all over the world, we can make this happen. It's going to be a long journey. It's going to be a long journey. But I believe that ultimately we'll get there. And uh, I was reading messages from many Nigerians in the diaspora and from, you know, members of the Diaspora Voting Council in London. I detected a lot of disappointment at not being able to vote in 2023, an election which they see as historic and very significant indeed. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm disappointed. And they're putting a lot of work into the lobbying and they were around all the zones were part of the public hearing and uh, we were in Abuja and Lagos but we were promised all the support but it didn't happen so sorry NDVC I'm also disappointed a lot, a lot of us are disappointed but you can't give up like I said the freedom of information bill took well over 10 years this is this has taken this just this four years of this parliament and I know we, we tried something when I was there in Parliament, but it didn't even go anywhere. But it went as far as them even listing it as a constitutional amendment. But we keep lobbying, we keep pleading, but the key thing is lobbying and don't give up. Imagine all the aspirants come together and say, listen, 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 that's why voting, that's why voting, that's why voting. You make it an agenda rather than fight each other of where you come from, of uh, leadership, uh, fighting over petty things, going on social media and abusing each other. Focus your energy. On this one thing of diaspora voting, and if all of them come together and put pressure on parliament, I think it can be achieved. 
Very, very interesting indeed. And uh, it's, it's great to see your ebullience about this uh, particular issue. I want to thank you very much indeed, uh, Abike Dabiri Erewa, who is the chairperson and CEO of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Thank you ever so much.